Hey everybody, welcome to Ludic Audio, I'm Max, and today we're going to go over how to create some really simple sample instruments using Contact. If you don't have Contact, no worries, pretty much any sampler will do. Alright, so let's just quickly go through everything we'll need to do to create our instrument. First, obviously we need to record whatever it is that we're trying to turn into our sound library. Second, we're going to denoise the audio. Third, we're going to chop up and edit the audio, a little bit of pitch correction too, if needed. Fourth, name all of our individual files in a way that makes sense. And finally, we'll take all of our audio files and throw it into a sampler. Okay, so starting out, we need to record our instrument. For this video, we're going to be creating an upright bass library. A buddy of mine who I work with was kind enough to help me out with this sample session. So during the recording, I had him do a few different techniques. We did legato, staccato, pizzicato, and then also a little bit of aleatoric type stuff. So with each one of these techniques, I had him play a whole tone scale or every other note. So if he's starting on a low E, his next note is F sharp, then G sharp, A sharp, C, D, and then back to E again, and that pattern just continues over and over again. I do this because rather than recording every single note, the sampler can just transpose whatever note it is down a half step as well. Um, so this just saves us a little bit of time and memory constraints and whatever else. You can obviously do less if you want or more. So the more recording you do, obviously the more detail you have, the less you do, the more artificial it starts sounding. Okay, once we're done recording, I'm going to take all those files and throw them into a program that will denoise them a little bit. It's not 100% necessary, but it does help the overall sound quality of your instrument if you can do this. The program I'm using is RX Elements by Isotope. Okay, once we're done denoising the audio and we've bounced those files, we're going to bring them in to Pro Tools or some other DAW that you're comfortable with using. Now we're going to take this large file and chop it up into the individual notes that we want. After that, we're going to take those individual notes and put them through Melodyne, which is a pitch correction plugin that lets me check and make sure everything's in tune. If it's not, I can just do some slight adjustments here and there. After that, we're going to create a new audio file for each individual note. I use a very specific naming convention for all the notes in a particular library. For example, let's look at some of the files in my upright legato library. So first you'll see a number. This helps us make sure that the pitch is going from lowest to highest in the file order. Otherwise, we'd have upright legato E1 and then the next file would be upright legato E2, for example. Next, we have the name of the instrument, which is the upright. After that is how we are playing that instrument, so legato or leg for short. Then after that, we have the specific pitch on how it would line up on the piano. Okay, now we're on to our final step. So I'm gonna take our lowest note and drag it into our empty contact file. This will create an instrument. I'm gonna hit the wrench and then go to the mapping editor. So we're just gonna close the range of that clip. Then we're going to move it to whatever pitch it says in the file, which in this case is E1. After that, I'll take all these other files, drag them in, move each one to its correct note. Once that's done, I'm going to highlight all of them and then drag their range down a half step. If you remember, we recorded every other note. So now that we've dragged the range down a half step, whenever we play that note a half step lower, Contact will actually make sure to play that recording a half step lower. Okay, once we've done that, we're just gonna save this as a new instrument, gonna test it out, make sure it works. And then now let's just have a listen to it. Okay, so this was just meant to be a quick tutorial on how to create a really simple sample instrument. Pretty soon I'll be coming out with a new video showing how to create more in-depth and complicated virtual instruments. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, feel free to like and subscribe.